Hey guys, in this video I want to discuss a few important concepts that should help you to design your lifestyle to become a better animator. These are ideas that also help related disciplines like art, writing, design, directing. The first concept, which I'm sure many of you already know, is flow state. You want to create an environment where you can easily get into flow state and stay there. It's really about managing distractions and creating long stretches of time which are uninterrupted. Because every time you get interrupted, you come out of flow state and it takes time to get back into it. So here are some measures you can take to reduce the distractions. There are a number of Chrome plugins which I use, which I will try to remember to link in the description. I use these to help manage the distractions that are on the internet. Finding reference footage on the internet is part of my job, so Chrome plugins do help me to reduce the number of distractions I encounter when finding that reference footage. Make sure that messenger apps like Skype and Discord don't automatically launch on startup. A lot of these apps have this set as a default and it's really annoying, it's just a, a terrible way to start your day if the first thing you do after starting your computer is check through your instant messages. You're instantly distracted from that point onwards. Another device I use is just a simple timer. Set a timer for half an hour or an hour and just commit to working without distractions for that time. If you get an idea, just write it down on a notepad. You will probably find that once the timer is up, you can just keep working and you don't want to stop because you've reached flow state by that point. I invested in a water tank by the desk so I don't even need to stop what I'm doing when I'm thirsty. And this is one of my favorite hacks. There's a link to the one that I use in the description. It's very affordable, it's really good, and uh, I've just saved so much time by implementing this. Choose working hours where there are few distractions. Usually the best times I find are either late at night or early in the morning. And uh, don't, don't burn the candle at both ends, so just choose one or the other. If you work in-house at a studio, maybe see if you can find patches of time when uh, not many people are in the studio. Screen recording. So setting a screen recorder or live streaming can actually really help with productivity because while people are watching, I feel like I can't slack off and get distracted or go do something else because I'm kind of being held accountable. When I was really struggling to work without distractions, I would start streaming on Twitch and it would force me to keep working on the animation for as long as the stream was running which would often be three to four hours. And by the way, Patreon supporters get access to the recordings of these streams. So uh, if you're interested in that, go and support me on Patreon. The only problem is that streaming can invite distractions because you might be talking with people visiting your stream. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword there, but then you can do silent streams where you don't have your microphone on. People can only come on and watch and they can't actually, they can't actually talk with you. The screen recording software I use is called OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software, which is free to use and to download. And of course, the other thing I recommend you have open as you make an animation is my animator's checklist. And uh, this is a free PDF which you can download from my website and it allows you to follow a clear workflow which gets you from concept to finished animation. So the link to that will be in the description. Next is the concept of osmosis. Surround yourself with imagery which inspires you. It's likely that you will absorb things about the images over time and they will add vitality to your work. It can also motivate you as it gives you something to aspire to. So to do this you can either you can buy posters or you can just take your favorite images and print them off onto paper and stick them up around where you work. A lot of my little posters come from going to conventions and art fairs. Another really important 
thing that people don't think about is creating a space where you actually want to spend time there like it's comfortable you can easily spend a lot of time there you create an environment where you're enjoying it you're enjoying just being there so actually the the layout of your room and where you situate it certain decisions that you make with with the room or the office the studio wherever you work they can be really important long term to encourage you to spend a lot of time there Osmosis also works with your other senses. You can set background music to optimize your state of mind. Music is essentially emotional hijacking and you can use this to your advantage. So like for me, for instance, I listen to uplifting music when I want to go to a positive state of mind. Instrumental music when I need to concentrate and get into flow state jazz when I want to add some random chaos to my visuals, classical when I'm honing a drawing or painting into something that is aesthetic. That's just what works for me, but uh, experiment on yourself and notice what works and what doesn't work. I believe that one of the main hindrances to people's success, not just in animation but in their lives in general, is commute time. So commuting to and from work takes up masses of time out of your week where you would otherwise be productive and also traveling in general is pretty exhausting. I know this is something that a lot of people cannot change. If the place where they work is a long distance away, they can't just pick up and move to a different house. But I'm just aware that as a freelancer who works from home, this is one massive advantage that I have over a lot of other people who are forced to spend hours out of each day on a busy train, on a bus or in a car where they can't draw or where they can't work at their ordinary computer. So I just wanted to put it out there as something to think about. Raising the Tobago's, we growing like fresh tomatoes. Them boys on fire, two fuego. We pass it round hot potato. Everything is new wave. Oh, I'm with my sweet. So, uh, let's talk about sleep the optimal number of hours of sleep each night. And that number for adults is somewhere between seven and eight hours, depending on on the person and depending on their age. Sometimes this isn't a problem. Sometimes we can get by with less sleep than we need and we can still function through the whole day. But it is my theory that our minds particularly struggle with creative tasks when we are sleep deprived. You will still be able to do tasks like in-betweening and colouring, which are fairly mindless labour, which is repetitive and uses muscle memory. But the high-functioning decision-making of writing, storyboarding or directing, these are things which need a good amount of sleep in order to think clearly and effectively. So I make sure to get a solid 8 hours of sleep starting at the same time every night if you weren't getting this before, I think you would notice a greater productivity and ability to think creatively and make good decisions. I also make sure not to sleep longer than 8 hours unless I'm recovering from something like illness or jet lag. Oversleeping is a waste of productive time. So the other side to this whole thing is what you choose to animate and how you animate it. And I've made a separate video about how you can maximize your efficiency with the animations you produce, and I will link that down below. This video is sponsored by Audible. Very excited to talk about Audible today because I use Audible so much in my day-to-day -day life. I believe Audible is very relevant to this video because it helps me to learn a lot of information without taking any time away from my work tasks. I just love that efficiency about it. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Every month, members get one credit to pick any title plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection and access to daily news as well as guided meditation programs. I didn't know about that actually. You'll also enjoy easy audiobook exchanges and your own audiobook library and you keep those audiobooks forever, even if you cancel. I use Audible during everyday tasks like going to work, going to the supermarket, working out, eating. These are activities which I cannot completely cut out of my routine and they don't need 100% of my concentration. So it feels like in our busy lives we have fewer and fewer opportunities to break open a paperback book. And when we do that, we can't multitask. 
Audible is the perfect solution to this. It is hard to narrow this down to just one audiobook recommendation. Um, if you want to read a really good story, I would recommend Fahrenheit 451. So it's set in this dystopia world where books are illegal and the fireman's job is to start fires rather than putting them out. It was a pleasure to burn. Very enjoyable, thought-provoking, gripping story and an absolute classic. Go to audible.com slash Howard Wimshurst or text Howard Wimshurst to 500 500 and start listening with an exclusive 30-day free trial one free audiobook of your choice and two Audible originals absolutely free. Well, these are my ideas for optimizing your lifestyle for animation or for artwork or any, any kind of creative work really. I'm not perfect at this so I would love to hear if you have any lifestyle ideas of your own which work for you. Um, Alright, that's it, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> go, go, go. Use the climbing experience we've done. Oh, watch out for that branch.